Let's look at how we can calculate drying time when a moist sample is being dried uh, in, uh, for example, heated air. There are two rate periods, as we saw in a previous tutorial, that are important in drying. The first one is the constant rate period. So we will first develop the equations that are useful to determine the drying time for the constant rate period. Uh, then in a separate tutorial, we will look at the falling rate period. So we will begin by writing this expression, m dot c equals w0 minus wc divided by tc, where these symbols, m dot c represents the moisture removal rate during the constant rate period, and the units are kilograms of water per second kilograms of dry solids. So uh, moisture removal rate is on dry basis. And W0 equals the initial moisture content of the sample. And again, in dry basis, it will be kilograms of water per kilogram of dry solids. And WC is the critical moisture content. This is the moisture content that is at the end of the constant rate period before the falling rate period begins. Again, the units will be kilograms of water per kilogram of dry solids, again in dry basis. And Tc is the time for the constant rate period, and that will be in seconds. So the equation essentially is the change in the moisture content from initial to the critical moisture content divided by the time which gives us the moisture removal rate. Now if we look at the heat transfer during this constant rate period between the sample and the air, we have Q equals HA TA minus TS where Q is the rate of heat transfer, the units are watts or joules per second. H is the convective heat transfer coefficient with the units watts per square meter Celsius. A is the surface area of the product in square meters. TA is the heated air temperature in degrees Celsius. And TS is the product surface temperature in degrees Celsius. So this equation essentially expresses the rate of heat transfer from the air to the product during constant rate period. Now also note that during constant rate, the product surface will remain at the wet bulb temperature of the air. That is because as this moist sample is placed in the air, during the constant rate period, there is always a film of water present on the surface of that sample throughout the constant rate period. Recall uh, how we defined wet bulb temperature in our tutorial in psychrometrics, where the definition of wet bulb temperature was that there is always a film of water present around the bulb of the thermometer. Well, it is very similar here where there is a layer of water always present around the sample because water can very easily transfer from the inside to the outside surface. There is a lot of water present in the sample. So the temperature, the surface temperature of the product will be the same as the wet bulb temperature of the air. Now if we look at the water vapor transfer during constant rate period, we can also write this expression. M dot C equals Km times A times MW times P divided by 0 0.622 R times TA and then in the numerator we have multiplied the quantity with WS minus WA. Again, let's look at all these symbols. Km is the mass transfer coefficient with the units meter per second. 
A is the area in square meters. MW is the molecular weight of water. P is the atmospheric pressure in kilopascals. TA is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. R is the gas constant. Uh, the value of gas constant is 8314.41 cubic meters pascals divided by kilogram mole Kelvin. WA is the humidity ratio of air. The units are kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air. And WS is the humidity ratio at product surface with kilogram of water per kilogram of dry air. So note on the previous screen we wrote m dot c equals w0 minus wc divided by tc. So with these two equations if we eliminate m dot c we can write the final equation in terms of tc as tc equals 0 0.622 r times ta in parenthesis lowercase w0 minus lowercase wc divided by km a mw p and then uppercase ws which is for humidity ratios minus uppercase wa so this equation can be used then to find out the time for the constant rate period on the other hand if we develop this analysis from thermal energy transfer standpoint, we can then say that Q equals M dot C times HL. This is the amount of heat that is needed to evaporate the water from the sample surface. Remember there is a water, film of water always present on the surface of the product. HL is the latent heat of vaporization at the wet bulb temperature and the units are joules per kilogram water. And also from the previous screen you will know that Q we wrote as Q equals HA TA minus TS which express the rate of heat transfer between the product and the air. So from these three equations we can write M dot C equals W0 minus WC over TC equals HA over capital HL and in parentheses TA minus TS and then rearranging the terms we have TC equals HL W0 minus WC divided by HA and in parentheses we have TA minus TS. Again, this is the time for constant rate period if we considered heat transfer uh, between the object and the air. So there are two different ways that we can find out the time for constant rate period. One is the mass transfer or water vapor transfer considerations and that is the top equation or we can use the heat transfer uh, between air and product during the constant rate period and uh, find out the uh, time for constant rate from the equation given here in the lower part of this screen. So this gives us the time for the constant rate period. Uh, in a separate tutorial we will look at the time for the falling rate period.